فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are in the explanation of the kitab ثلاثة الأصول written by الشيخ Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullahu ta'ala. We are on the third type of anwa' al-ibadah, the types of ibadah that we were speaking about. We previously spoke about al dua We also spoke about al-khawf, fear. We are now on the third one, which is al raja So what does al raja mean? al raja is a mazdaru qawlihim rajawtu. It's a verb noun from the word rajawtu. وهي التي تدل على الأمل. It shows that you hope for something, that you want something. الذي هو نقيض اليأس and the opposite of it is to give up. Yes. So the word yes is the opposite of the word الرجاء. Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim, he said, fi haddi al-raja, when he defined raja, he said, al-raja'u, raja' means, huwa al-nadaru ila sa'ati rahmatillahi. It is to observe Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's vast mercy. It is to observe Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's vast mercy. And that definition it really is very good on behalf of the Sheikh. Another place he said in his Madarij al-Salikin that Raja is, which is also another good observation of his, is that is that the person he goes out to Il al Amni safety. But that hope, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Al-Qayyim says, it should not reach you to, to a point where you find safety from Allah Ta'ala's punishment. Because the only person who finds safety from Allah Ta'ala's makar, Allah's planning, is those who are destroyed. And we spoke about that when we were speaking about Al-Khawf. So it's a level that doesn't take you to Huh? Finding safety from Allah's punishment subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's plans. And inshallah ta'ala, when we speak about the different types of al raja and the difference between al raja and tamanni, we'll speak about that inshallah ta'ala in more details. But the fiqh of the musannif, the author, rahimahullah, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, for him to bring al khawf. And al raja to bring al khawf and al raja together like this shows that the Sheikh has fiqh and comprehension, and he's very because he didn't just do it, but rather there was a purpose why he mentioned them together. What he could have done was he could have done al khawf first, and then he could have done dua, and then he could have done al raja, right? But what he did was he done a dua, and then he brought al khawf, and then next to it he mentioned al raja. The reason is because. فالخوف والرجاء خوف الرجاء جناحان they are two wings يطير بهما السالكون the people who are trying to get to Allah they are trying to reach Allah they are trying to get to their destination these are the two wings they fly with one wing is what fear and one wing is hope الرجاء so every level before you get to Allah there are stations and levels you have to get through. If you want to go to King's Cross 
and you take the northern line from here, the stations that you're going to go through, you're not going to get to the next station unless you, unless the train moves. If the train stops, you won't be able to get to your next station. So your goal, your ultimate goal is to get to King's Cross station, right? وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى The believer wants to get to Allah. But there are stations and levels to go to. But he won't be able to get to those stations. He won't be able to move to get to those stations unless both of his wings are intact. And each wing signifies hope and, and fear. <coughs> and also, if you look at the Qur'an... One of the meanings that al raja actually comes in is al khawfu In the Quran, the word raja actually came in the meaning of al khawfu to show you that the strong relationship between the two, and that you need both. As Allah said in Subhanahu wa Taala in Surah al Nuh, what did Allah say? Ayah thirteen: "Ma lakum la tarjuna lillahi wa qara." Ma lakum. لا ترجون لله وقارا. So here it means ما لكم لا ترجون means أي تخافون عظمة الله. Why is it that you're not scared of Allah تبارك وتعالى, His Majesty? Why is it that you're not scared of Him سبحانه وتعالى? Also Allah تبارك وتعالى He says in what? In سورة النبأ. إنهم كانوا لا يرجون حسابه. The word حساب here, sorry, the word رجاء here is actually what? Is الخوف فيها. إنهم كانوا لا يرجون حسابه. Also, سورة عنكبوت آية five. Allah says من كان يرجو لقاء الله. So those are the meanings. One of the meanings that the word comes in. So that shows you. That the Shaykh Rahimahullah is means fiqh al musannif. Uh, it's his fiqh that he brought it together like that. Al khawfu and al rajaw. Also, are you with me, brothers? It's amazing how the author put khawf first and then he put raja next. Are you with me? Because in the course of your life, are you with me, brothers? The believer, he comes with both of them simultaneously. صح? But when he's dying, which one is needed from him? On the deathbed. The scholars, they say that the raja has to be higher. Your hope of Allah. And I am what my slave thinks of me. So at this particular point, the good thought that you have of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, are you there? Is what you're going to be rewarded for. So he put that after. Rahimahullah ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters. The raja it divides in diff it's in different types. Of different categories. And I ask from you all. Intabihu li hadha ta'seel jiddan. Look at this ta'seel. This point very well. لأن كثيرا من المسلمين because a lot of the Muslims a lot of the Muslims today لأن كثيرا من المسلمين الآن many of the Muslims today لا يحسن أن يفهم منزلة الرجاء they don't know the the reality and the station and the and the concept behind الرجاء they don't understand it and because of the lack of understanding of what رجاء means many people fall short and they think they're coming with the praiseworthy رجاء and the one that's needed from them. So the question is, if they are many types, فَمَا هِيَ أَقْسَامُ الرَّجَاءِ Then what are the types? Can you give it to us? نعم. الرجاء ثلاثة أقسام. It's of three types. نوعان محمودان. Two types are praiseworthy. ونوع غرور. And a type which is ونوع غرور ومذموم. And there's another type which is blameworthy. Criticized and it's deception. So let's mention the two praiseworthy ones. The first of the the ones which is praiseworthy is an individual. It's the Raja Urajulin. 
It's the hope of a man, a hope of a woman. يَعْمَلُوا بِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ Who are coming with the obedience of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala عَلَى نُورٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ From a light from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala فَوَرَاجٍ لِثَوَابِ اللَّهِ And he's hoping for the reward of Allah. He's in the obedience of Allah. He's fasting. Are you there? He's obeying Allah. He's fasting in the month of Ramadan. He's praying his five daily prayers. He's also praying his sunan. He's praying his qiyamul layl. He's studying. He's in, he's in obedience. He's in obedience. And he's doing that all in accordance to the sunnah. Ala nurim min Allah. A light from Allah. He's not just doing it based on his hawa. And how, you know, how his desires shows it to him. But he's doing it in accordance to the kitab and the sunnah. And he's hoping from all of this that he's doing, he's hoping for a reward. فَوَرَاجٍ لِثَوَابِ اللَّهِ Ibn Al-Qayyim says The second one is <coughs> The second one is رَجَاءُ رَجُلٍ The hope of a man Or a hope of a woman أَذْنَبَ Who committed sins Who's committing a sin Who's dwelling inside sins وَكُلُّنَا ذَلِكَ الْمُدْنِ And no one should try to take himself out of this categorization Because he's Everyone is a sinner لَكِنَّهُ تَابَ إِلَى اللَّهِ But he repented to Allah Jalla wa'ala He repented to Allah وَاسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ And he asks Allah for forgiveness فَوَرَاجٍ لِمَغْفِرَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَعَفُهِ وَإِحْسَانِهِ وَجُودِهِ وَحِلْمِهِ وَكَرَمِهِ He's in desires and he wants Allah to forgive him He wants Allah to bestow his mercy upon him He wants Allah to show him kindness and generosity That's what he wants And this sin that he just did أَوْرَثَتْهُ It inherited him in kisar and humiliation and humility towards Allah Taala, he humiliated himself for Allah Taala. And it pushed him to obeying Allah Taala. Ibn Al Qayyim he says it in many places in his uh, works. He says, Maybe an obedience that a person did may take him to hellfire. And sometimes disobedience a person does may take him to Jannah. Are you with me? He used to also say, عَجَبًا عُجْبًا Sorry, وَكِبْرًا فَرُبَّ Sometimes obedience a person does, what it, what it inherits him is, and what he takes from that obedience is, that is conceit. He becomes arrogant from it. I'm righteous. Look at me. Self-righteous, huh? And another person, another sin, it inherits this person just humiliation, humbleness. And you see, and he repents to Allah, and then again he repents and he gets closer to Allah even more. And then he comes with ta'a, obedience after obedience, with hope with him. This is the second type of person. The woman, are you all, you're all familiar with the woman who committed the zina? And then when she committed the zina, farujimat, she got stoned and she died. And then the Prophet ﷺ lined up the companions to pray janazah on her. And so the Sahabas, Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in, they lined up and Umar came to the Prophet. He said, Ya Rasulullah, atusalli alayha wa qad zanat? Are you going to pray on her when she, when she has committed zina? The Prophet said to Umar ibn al-Khattab, إِنَّهَا تَابَتْ تَوْبَةً This woman has repented their repentance. لَوْ وُسِعَتْ If that repentance was to be distributed, إِنَّهَا تَابَتْ تَوْبَةً لَوْ وُسِعَتْ عَلَى سَبْعِيلَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ لَوْ وَسِعَتْهُمْ If it was distributed among 70 families of the people of Medina, her repentance would overcome it. So what did her sin inherit her right now? A great station. Sah? It gave her something. Sah? And sometimes an act of righteousness and an act of good may, may bring a person down and take him to the hellfire. May take you to the hellfire. So those two that I just mentioned, the first one and the second one, are both what? Praiseworthy. That kind of hope in that kind of state is praiseworthy. So what was the first one? You're doing righteous actions, you're obeying Allah wa ta'ala, and you're still hoping for it to be accepted from you. That's good. Another one is a person who's sinning, who's sinning, who's committing crimes, who's going against Allah's commands, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he hopes for Allah's forgiveness. But he's not just hoping, he's actually coming with actions, he's repenting, he's, he's, he's staying away from it, he's 
fighting himself and he's fighting with the nafs that's pushing him to it. This is also praiseworthy. Those two. The third one is the third one is Raja'u Rajulin. It's the repentance of an individual. Mutamadin fil ma'asi wa He's just dwelling. He's swimming inside the sins. Wal khataya. Tariq lil amali wa ta'a. And he has left off acts of obedience. And then here, here, here you find him. Wa huwa yarju rahmatullah. And he goes, Allah is ghafur rahim. Allah is very merciful. But he, whilst he's saying that, bila amal, no actions to back that up. He's not coming with anything, huh? He's just sitting there, committing all the sins there is, going against the commands of Allah wa ta'ala, disobeying Allah wa ta'ala, and, and then he's saying what? Allah is very merciful. You know, wala taqnatun rahmatillah, don't give up on Allah's mercy. He says that. This person, their one is gurur and tamanni. So now we now learned al-farqu bayna al-raja, the difference between raja and tamanni. The difference is what? The difference is, is that أن التمني يصاحبه الكسل تمني تمني it's accompanied with laziness which is when a person has hopes but their hopes is with based on laziness ولا يسلك صاحبه الطريق الجدي and the person doesn't take the path of seriousness he doesn't strive والرجاء على ضد من ذلك as for hope that's praiseworthy the رجاء type of hope are you with me brothers this one no no, this person actually what? He's actually الجدي. He takes the path of seriousness and he, str- he strives. Are you there? وَيُصَاحِبُهُ العمل. And actions are with it. Actions are with it. And that's why Hassan al-Basri said, as Ibn Abi Dunya brought in his Kitab al-Wajal uh, Kitab al-Wajal and Ibn al-Jawzi in his Kitab, uh, his Kashf, uh, that Hassan al Basri said, "In the a group of people, they got deceived by aman al maghfirah, the hopes of forgiveness. Hatta kharaju min al dunya, wala hasanat lahum. They left this dunya without no righteous deeds. Yaqul ahaduhum, one of them keeps saying to you." I think good of my Lord. He keeps saying to you. Uh, Hassan said he's a liar, that person. If he really thought good of his Lord, he would have perfected his actions. He would have come with actions. And then he recited the ayah. So if this person had hopes of Allah wa ta'ala, فَلَوْ رَجَعَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ If he hoped for, the, for, for what? In Allah wa ta'ala and he thought good of him. لَطَلَبَهَا بِالْأَعْمَالِ الصَّالِحَةِ He would have come. He would have come with righteous actions. And wallahi, if you want to know the sign of a person's destruction, do you want to know alamatu الشَّقَاوَةِ الشَّقَاوَةِ Or you want to know alamatu the sign الشَّقَاء أَنْ يَعْصِ الْعَبْدَ is when the person disobeys his Lord وَيَرْجُوا أَنْ يَنْجُوا مِنَ الْهَلَاكِ and then he hopes to be saved from destruction أما as for علامة الصحة الرجاء but if you want to know a person whose رجاء is intact and it's correct and it's good it is when the person thinks good of Allah تبارك وتعالى and then the person stands up and he makes his way and he strives and he comes with the efforts that are needed from him. ولذلك الإمام محافظ ابن حجر العسقلاني he says in Fathul Bari volume 11 page 301 he says المقصود من الرجاء the intent behind الرجاء أن من وقع منه تقصير the person whose shortcoming occur from him فَلْيُحْسِنْ ظَنَّهُ بِاللَّهِ Think good of your Lord. وَيَرْجُوا أَنْ يَمْحُوا عَنْهُ ذَنْبَهِ And hope that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He wipes off your sins for you. وَكَذَا مَنْ وَقَعَ مِنْهُ طَاعَةٌ Just like that, the one who 
it occurs from him obedience. Yarju. He hopes for Qabulaha that is accepted from him. Wa manin hamaka al maasiati. As for the one who goes into the sins head in and dwells and swims inside the sins. Rajian and then he's hoping. Adam al Muakhati that he's not going to be accounted for all these sins that he's doing. Bigayri Nadamin without any regret in, in him. Wala iqala'in and he's not trying to get away from the sins. Fahada fi ghururin. Then that person is in delusion. He's de- delusional person. And then he goes into saying, Wa ma ahsana qawla abi Uthman al Jizi. What's more greater than the statement of Abi Uthman al Jizi, who said, Min alamati sa'ada, from the signs of success. And tuti'a is to obey. Watakhafa and it's to fear. Allah tuqbala that it won't be accepted from you. Allahu Akbar. It is to obey Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And then fear that it won't be accepted from you. Wamin alamati shaka'i. And from the signs of destruction is and ta'siya. That you disobey Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala wa tarju and tanju. And you hope that you are saved. Now the question is, what is the haqiqah and the reality of Ar Raja? What's the reality? What's the true concept of Ar Raja? We have got some understanding, no doubt. We know what it means, but we really want to f- understand it in in a more in-depth understanding. And there's no one else who can do that for us uh, more better than uh, Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziya rahimahullahu ta'ala. Ibn al-Qayyim says in his book Madariju al-Salikid first volume page 43 to 44 he says al-raja'u it is hoping in Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Al Raja means hoping. Sorry, Al Raja is it is a servitude. And it's to connect. Billahi with Allah Min haythu smuhu Through his names Your connection And your hope is based on Allah's names Such as Al-Barru Al-Muhsinu Al-Barru And Al-Muhsinu Fadhalika ta'alluqu Wa ta'abudu Bihada al-ismi So you actually connect yourself to the word Al-Barru That Allah is obedient subhanahu wa ta'ala also Allah is muhsin, excellence, righteousness, and subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does ihsan for his creation. Huh? Are you with me, brothers? It is that you connect yourself and you worship Allah based on what ta'abud bi al ism. You worship him based on that name. Well ma'rifa to billahi pay attention. This is qa'ida muhimma jiddan. Well ma'rifa to billahi knowing Allah. هو الذي أوجب للعبد الرجاء من حيث يدري ومن حيث لا يدري. Knowing Allah's names, I mean knowing Allah, it is what necessitates for the person to come with hope, whether he knows it or he doesn't. Whether you know or not, the reason why hope comes is your knowledge of Allah تبارك وتعالى. فقوة الرجاء, the strength and the power in الرجاء. على حسب is based upon what قوة المعرفة بالله وأسمائه وصفاته is when the person learns Allah's names and attributes the more a person studies Allah's names and attributes and the more he goes into it the more his hope grows so now somebody may ask you the strength of my hope is based upon what it's based upon what the strength of your knowledge of Allah's names and attributes. 
how much you're in knowledge of Allah Taala's names and attributes. <coughs> and then he goes on to say in وَغَلَبَتِ رَحْمَتِهِ غَضَبُهُ وَغَلَبَتِ رَحْمَتِهِ غَضَبَهُ وَلَوْلَا رُوحُ الرَّجَاءِ لَعُطِّلَتْ عُبُودِيَةُ الْقَلْبِ وَالْجَوَارِحِ وَهُدِّمَتْ صَوَامِعُ وَبِيَعُومُ وَصَلَوَاتُ وَمَسَاجِدُ يُذْكَرُ فِي هَسْمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا Ibn Al-Qayyim says and the fact that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's mercy overcomes his anger if you didn't know that it's knowing Allah's names and attributes right for instance knowing that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's anger what overcomes it وَغَلَبَتْ رَحْمَتِهِ that Allah's mercy overcomes his what? غَضَبَهُ his anger right? Is Allah the Prophet said about Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And he goes on saying, Walawla ruhu rajai, if the soul of hope was not present in us, if we didn't have that spirit of hope in us, La Uttilat Ubudiyatu, our Ubudiyah would be dismantled. Our servitude would be dismantled from our hearts and from our limbs. It will destroy everything. So this is the truth of the matter. Now we understand if one wants to gain a raja and that we the raja that we defined and that we spoke about and that we mentioned what it means, the raja that comes with amal, the raja that has in it fear, the raja ah, this is the raja we're talking about. Sahih? To come with that will only occur correctly and, and strongly, it will only occur. When the person has knowledge and understanding and comprehension of Allah's names and attributes. And the more you know Allah Ta'ala's names, and the more you know his characteristics, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more this will affect you. The more your raja and your hope will be affected by it. But the delicate, the people who are suicidal, and the people they actually don't have knowledge and understanding of Allah Ta'ala. Their knowledge of Allah Ta'ala and their understanding of who he is. And his attributes and his characteristics, if they knew that, this would not have ever come to their mind. And it would never have occurred to them. You see? So that's kalam wallahi of from Ibn al Qayyim that shows true understanding of what it is. <clears throat> Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He praised the people who have the station of Raja. In His book, many places, Allah praised them, subhanahu. Wa Ta'ala. Are you with are you with me, brothers? Are you there? And this ayah, this first ayah that I'm gonna bring inshaAllah ta'ala is an ayah to show you, pay attention, brothers, that the raja, if it's not done with the actions, it's not praiseworthy. And that the sharia doesn't even consider that to be a raja. If you don't come with actions, if you're not working hard, if you're not putting efforts in, to then have hopes, the sharia won't consider that to be a hope. For example, Allah says in this ayah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Verily, those who believe in Allah. وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا And those who migrated. وَجَاهَدُوا And they fought. فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ In the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. أُولَٰئِكَ Those who have been mentioned. يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ And they're the ones who are hoping for Allah. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And verily, Allah is one who is very merciful. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So Allah referred to إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who believed. وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ These are the ones. What have they come with? They have come with belief of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And then they migrated. So their belief of Allah, it manifested on their limbs. So they got up and they left the land of the disbelievers and they went to the land of the believers. Yeah? And they fought in the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ These are the ones who hope for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's mercy. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Very little Allah is for one who forgives and merciful to his creation. Are you with me, brothers? Also, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 21, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Pay attention, this ayah is another ayah that shows this. Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ The Prophet of Allah is a role model for you. You're looking for a role model? You want somebody to uh, imitate? 
you want somebody to follow here there here it is stop telling the people that we don't have role models in this country we do have role models we have rasulullah the best of examples rasulullah came and did not want anything from us these people that the people are taking as role models today like rappers and singers and artists and stuff they have motives they have goals they want to make money out of you they want make they want to make money out of you their goal is to take what's in your pocket they want you to look up to them they want you to love them and they don't they want you to start buying their their products so they can get money out of you as for profits la what did Allah say about them I'm not going to ask you no reward for what I'm doing for you guys prophets came to save you from the hellfire and set us good examples these people that our youngsters and our youths are taking as role models they don't set you guys good record, uh, re- good good examples so, but Rasulullah showed us good example a good way to live our life so look at this ayah because it's very powerful Allah says for you every one of us every individual young old there's a good example in the Prophet ﷺ. Look what Allah says. Are you hoping for Allah in the day of judgment? The Prophet, there's a good example in it for him. So following the Messenger والسلام, treading on his path, being the way he was والسلام, is a sign of hope for Allah in the day of judgment. When a person is following the Prophet والسلام, from his heart, and externally as well. And what? Externally. Internally and internally he follows the Prophet ﷺ. He believes what the Prophet believed. And he's externally following the Prophet ﷺ in the way he dresses, the way he looks, the way he talks, the way he is, the way his beard is. Everything. He follows the Prophet ﷺ. Allah tells us they're the ones. This verse tells us that they were the ones who were hoping for Allah and the, and the Day of Judgment. وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And they're the ones who remember Allah a lot. They are the ones who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot Also another type of ayah The Quran always brings action with hope You won't find hope just mentioned Independent from action Allah says The one who is standing And a lady is standing at night time He's standing at night He's praying, he's remembering Allah He's, he's coming with righteous actions Allah then says, وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ And he's hoping for the mercy of his Lord. Because he's praying. Through his praying, he's hoping for Allah Ta'ala's Jannah. Through his fasting, he's hoping for Allah Ta'ala's Jannah. See? Also, Allah Ta'ala, he says, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ Anyone who hopes to meet his Lord. And we, you might think to yourself, oh, what do you mean, hopes to meet his Lord? Yeah, there's another hadith that explains this properly. مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ وَمَنْ كَرِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ When the, the Prophet said, anyone who wants to meet Allah, Allah wants to meet you. And anyone who doesn't want to meet Allah, Allah does not want to meet him. Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, كُلُّنَا يَكْرَهُ الْمُوتِ Every one of us dislikes like death. If it means wanting to meet Allah, that you'd have to like death, then no one likes death. Everyone hates death. We all hate death, right? The Prophet said, لا يا عائشة, That's not the matter. That's not the matter. The matter isn't that you like death or you hate death. It's not. But it's when the angels come to you and you find out that you've passed the test, the believer wants to meet Allah. Once he finds out that he's passed the test, He's done what he was meant to do. He has come with what was needed from him. And he finds out, أَحَبَّ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ He starts to want to meet Allah. And Allah wants to meet him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the disbeliever, the criminal, the one who went against Allah's command, subhanahu wa ta'ala, did what Allah told him not to do. That individual, when he finds out that he has lost, he has not passed the test, what does he do? He doesn't want to meet Allah. And Allah does not want to meet him. So here this ayah says for man kana yarju liqa Allah the one who wants to meet Allah by making sure that he's passed the test with righteous actions and righteous deeds uh, that person is, what, is the one who wants to meet Allah but what's needed from you to want to meet Allah what are the cry because remember if you want to meet Allah Allah wants to meet you right are you with me brothers 
What is that that is needed from you? فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّي فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Come with what? So you have raja. You want to meet Allah? Are you in hope of meeting Allah? تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى فَلْيَعْمَلْ Do عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Righteous action وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدٍ And don't associate partners with your Lord Allah تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى Two things you'll be commanded here. فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا The scholars, if you go to Ibn Kathir, this ayah is the last ayah of Surah Al-Kahf. Look what Ibn Kathir says. فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Ibn Kathir says is مُتَابَعَةَ الرَّسُولِ Following the Prophet ﷺ. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّي أَحَدًا means come with Tawheed. So two things are needed from you if you want to be one who wants to meet Allah. تبارك. And you want to have the hope of meeting Allah. If you want to have raja in you. You have to come with Ittiba' and Tawheed. You have to come with Ittiba' and you have to come with Tawheed. Ittiba' meaning follow the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and Tawheed, worshipping Allah alone and not associating partners with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars they say min a'adhami ayah min a'adhami ayati al-raja the greatest verse that speaks about raja is this verse qawlu allahi jalla wa'ala the statement of Allah qul ya ibadi al-lazina asrafu ala anfusihim qul say ya ibadi my slaves al-lazina asrafu ala anfusihim those who have transgressed on their nafs those who have committed crimes those who have disobeyed their lord those who have done what he, those who have done what Allah told them not to do, those who left off what Allah told them not to leave off. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Don't give up on Allah's mercy. Don't give up on Allah تبارك وتعالى's mercy. إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Verily Allah, He forgives all sins. إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Allah تبارك وتعالى is Al Ghafur, the one who forgives. Al Rahim, the one who is very merciful to his creation. So don't give up. Don't ever think to yourself. Don't ever and don't let anyone tell you that you've committed a sin and there's no repentance for it. Every single sin that a person commits, there's a repentance for it. In this world whilst he's, whilst he's alive. Even shirk. Naam, even shirk. Associating partners with Allah. You will get forgiveness for it. Wallahi, my beloved brothers and sisters, pay attention. A person can be as good as they want, they can be good to their neighbors. He can be an honest person, a kind person, a generous person. If he's not a believer, la khair alahu. there's no khair to him. Sah? And he's in the hellfire. Sah? Sometimes the Muslims, they get. Are you with me, brothers? They'll do this to you. They, they do this to us. I don't know if they've done it to you guys, but I've come into situations where this question has been risen. They'll say to you, a Muslim who commits crimes, who sells drugs, who's a liar, who's a thief, who rapes, blah, blah, blah. They'll bring you a list like that. And they'll say to you, a disbeliever who's honest, who's kind, who's caring, who's, who's understanding, who stands up for the right, but he's a disbeliever. Which one's better? Huh? Which of those two is better? Yeah? In the eyes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, this believer is going to be punished for every wrong he has done, no doubt. Or he deserves to be punished for all of those sins that he's done and all those crimes that he's come with. And that's not belittling those crimes. لا أبدا. لكن لا يستوون عند الله. They're not the same. Because there is no sin greater than shirk. However, we might perceive the sin that they've done is to be big, shirk is bigger than it. Shirk is greater than it. وَلِذَلِكَ عَيْشَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهَا One of the kuffar who did that, who was kind, he looked after the hujaj when they came, he fed them, he took care of them. He, he, he was a man who was remembered in good. Remembered in good. And Aisha رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهَا She said, Ya Rasulullah, this man, this type of man, huh? she asked about his situation. Is he not going to be one who Allah is going to... The Prophet said, No, Ya Aisha. He never ever said, Allahumma ghfirli. He never ever said, Oh Allah, forgive me. In other words, he called on to other than Allah. (laughs) 
So nothing is greater than shirk. And any crime that a person does, if he repents from it, sincerely, he repents from that sin. In the Sharia, he is what? This hadith scholars differ on, on, on its authenticity and its khilafat regarding it. Like in the ma'na is mujma'un ali. The meaning is unanimously agreed upon. But what is authentically transmitted to the Prophet from the Prophet Ali Sallallahu is what? That Al Islam ma qablahu. Islam gets rid of everything before it. When a person comes into Islam from disbelief, all of the mistakes and all of the sins and everything he has done, it gets rid of it. Hajj. What does it do? It brings the person back. Raja'a, he comes back. Like the day his mother gave birth to him. And the person who repents is also what? A person who Allah forgives him. Every one of you repent to Allah. Turn to him. All of you. Prosperity and success is what you're going to achieve. If you repent to Allah wa ta'ala fi hadhi dunya, if you repent to Allah in this world and you come back from what you have done and the crimes that you have committed and the mistakes that you have come with, privately and publicly, you repent. Before Jannah, before you go to Jannah, and before you meet Allah wa ta'ala, in this dunya you're going to live a good life. Li'anna the sins, my beloved brothers and sisters, what it does to the heart is that it blackens the heart. It blackens the person's mind. The person distress, the person's consistently worried, the person's consistently in a state of anxiety. All of these are min athari dhunub, it's from the effects of the sins and the crimes that you've done that you've not repented from. The Prophet he said, every time every time the person commits a sin, a dot is placed on his heart. And then again he does another one. Again and dot. Another another dot. Another dot. Another dot. Until his heart becomes black. And then the Prophet recited the ayah Kalla Bal Rana ala kulubi makan wiksibun. And you know what happens at that point when your heart becomes black and dark? When your heart becomes black and dark, La Ya'rifu Ma'rufan wala yunkiru munkaran. The person will not recognize good and he will not reject evil. Everything becomes, huh? I don't know about you guys, but there was a vi- there was a video going around that I was it was sent to me on social media. It was sent to me through WhatsApp, and uh, I, re- I I watched it and it was shocking. It was shocking. It was a man who got taken to prison. He got taken to prison, an old man. I think they gave him gave him a life sentence. And I, I think his crime was that he murdered somebody or something. I think he did. Yeah, he first degree murder. He killed a person. And I could they asked him, you know. Or was he on a death? He was on death row, something like that. Or was it either a life sentence or was a death row? One of the two. So they asked him questions. They interviewed him to ask him, okay, what was it that made you do this? And guess what he said? He said, watching pornography made me do this. I think I shared it with you guys, right? He said, watching pornography is what made me do this. And he talked about it. He said, I was just a, a kid. He said, Allah, guess what he said, brothers? He said, my parents are not violent. They're not alcoholics. I'm not even from a family. My, my mother works. My father works. I'm from a very good household. I was, re- I was raised in a very good lifestyle. He said, not poverty. I wasn't hungry or I lived a poverty. No, it was nothing to do with that. No external factors. Other than, Hakika, what does it show you? It shows you that the sin starts off something small. You think to yourself, it's just a look. I'm not doing nothing bad. I'm just minding my own thing. Huh? Now his heart became black. That person will get to a point that if you tell him khair, he won't recognize it. Yeah, I can tell you khair, he won't recognize it. Wala yunkiru munkaran. And the evil that comes, he can't reject it. Because he's become desensitized. Become desensitized and he's finished. So the sins, they destroy your heart and they attack your heart. And once they do attack your heart, the way to get rid of it is to what? Repent. Well, Muhammad ibn Sirin said, 
amazement is with a group of people who are really concerned about their appearance, their thobes, to be white and clean and no dirt on it. But if you were to observe their hearts and to look at their hearts, look how black it is and tainted and filthy it is. Isn't that more important for you to care about and to be concerned about? Your heart, right? No. Willidalik the person whose heart is in control. They've got their they've got their heart in control. And they're making sure what goes in, they protect it. Are you there, brothers? Wallahi, I the other day I listened to Sheikh Abdul Karim al Khudair. Guess what he said? Sheikh Abdul Karim al Khudair said, I bought a smartphone. This is exactly what he said. He said, I bought a smartphone back a while. He said, I bought a smartphone. When I bought the smartphone, he said, as I was using it, a woman came up. A picture of a woman. What did they call this phone? A smartphone. The Sheikh said, Rahimahullah, Hafidahullah Ta'ala is still alive. And Rahimahullah, he needs the mercy of Allah. He said, I threw the phone away. And he said, I went back to the dumb phone. Because he said, Dar ul mafsadati awla min jalb al maslaha. Jalb ul dar ul mafsadati, repelling the evil, takes precedence over bringing any good. Repelling the evil takes precedence over it. I say evil, I have to repel the evil. So it's, that takes precedence over any good that's going to come. He said, Nah, the phone has good. But the mafsad that I just saw right now is first precedence to repel it. Allahu Akbar. Look how the qawa'id and the usul they apply in their day-to-day life. We've become so desensitized. Guess what they will do? A masjid is there. They'll say, there's so much maslaha in it. Akhi, look at, are you going to not look at all the maslaha? Which one takes presence? Is the sharia, does it, bring, does it see the pra- bringing the good first? Or is it first to push away the harm? Push away harm. The Sheikh said, this qa'id applies here. Allahu Akbar. You see, brothers? Nah. So any issue If you feel like there's a mafsada in it for you And there's a maslaha that are there You have to push away the mafsada first Before thinking about the masaliha that are in it But don't give up on the mercy of Allah wa ta'ala, But also repent from your sins And wallahi this shocked me because The shaykh He's protecting himself from the smallest things The smallest things are you there? This is where they this is where then they can go far. They can stay up at night when you can't stay up. They can fast the day times that you can't fast. They can do ta'at because their body is so energetic, so enthusiastic. And the reason why they are is because their heart is nurtured. Are you there, brothers? The right amount of doses are placed in their hearts, and the heart is alive. As for the rest, their hearts are dead. وفي الصحيحين إن بخاري المسلم من حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet said أنا عند ظني الحديث قال الله تعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى he said أنا عند ظني عبدي بي I am at um, I am what my slave thinks of me وأنا معه إذا ذكرني and I am with him if he remembers me فإن ذكرني وأنا معه إذا ذكرني فإن ذكرني في نفسي if he remembers me in himself ذكرته في نفسي I remember him in myself وإن ذكرني في ملأ but if he remembers me in a gathering ذكرته في ملأ خير منهم I will remember him in a gathering better than that gathering of his وإن تقرب إلي بش وإن تقرب إلي وإن تقرب إلي بشبر تقربت إليه ذراعا if he comes close to me a shibr a handspand تقربت إليه ذراعا I I come close to him an arms man. وَإِنْ تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ ذِرَاعًا And if he comes close to me ذِرَاعًا an arm span Allah says تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ بَاعًا I come to him Are you with me brothers? بَاعًا which is like one step. وَإِنْ أَتَانِي يَمْشِي If he comes to me walking أَتَيْتُ هَرْوَلَةً I come to him running. I come to him what? Running. This hadith are you there, brothers? This hadith 
shows that the slave has to come with something first in order for the response to come. Are you there? And this hadith also shows that Allah is what you think of Him. So if you think have high aspirations of Allah and you think good of Him and you hope good from Him, then Allah is what you think of Him. But that also requires that you come with actions, that you remember Allah wa ta'ala in yourself. You remember Him in gatherings. You remember Him by running to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala so He can run to you. Are you there, brothers? al jazau min jinsi al-amal. The reward is in accordance to what you do and what you come with. وفي الصحيحين also in Bukhari and Muslim in Hadith Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ينزل ربنا تبارك وتعالى Allah تبارك وتعالى descends and he comes down كل ليلة every night إلى سماء الدنيا he comes down to this earth حين يبقى ثلث الليل الأخير when the last third of the night is remaining فيقول Allah says من يدعوني فأستجيب له Who is going to ask from me and I will respond to him. I will give him what he wants. من يسألني Who is going to ask me فأعطيه and I will give him what he is asking for. من يستغفرني Who is going to ask me for forgiveness فأغفر له I can forgive him. So we have Allah تبارك وتعالى coming down. يليق نزول يليق بكمال بكمال الله تبارك وتعالى وجلالته. Of course, this descending is it happens in a way that befits His Majesty سبحانه وتعالى. He comes down every night, and Allah تبارك وتعالى He says, "من يدعوني who's going to ask me? فأستجيب له. I will give him. I will look. فأستجيب فأستجيب له. فأستجيب له. I will respond to him. I'll give him what he wants. Who's who's going to ask me?" Allah also says, "May yasaluni, who's going to ask me? Fa'atiha, I'll give it him. May yastaghfiruni, who's going to ask forgiveness from me? Fa'aghfir lahu, and I can forgive him." Allah did not even send angels down to do this. He came down for it himself, Subhanahu wa Taala. He came to do this. He placed it on himself. Allah has junood. Allah has an army, Subhanahu wa Taala, of angels. He could have sent them, right? He could have sent them to do it. He could have delegated it to him. But your Lord, Allah Taala, chose to come down. And here you are sleeping, snoring, watching movies, laughing. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Al-Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated in the Sahih. Wa fi al-Sahihayn min hadith Abu Huraira. An al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet said. فيما يحكي عن ربه عز وجل. This is a hadith القدسي. Allah تبارك وتعالى said, أذنب عبد ذنب. A slave did a sin. فقال the slave said, اللهم اغفر لي ذنبي. Oh Allah, forgive me for my sins. فقال تبارك وتعالى Allah then says, أذنب عبدي ذنبا. My slave has done a sin. فعلم أن له ربا يغفر الذنب. And the slave came to know that he has a Lord that forgives his sins. ويأخذ بالذنب and he can hold him account to his sins. ثم عاد فأذنب then he went back and he committed another sin. فقال أي ربي then the slave came running back to his lord. He said my lord اغفر لي ذنبي forgive me for my sin. فقال تبارك وتعالى الله then says عبدي أذنب ذنبا my slave had committed a sin. فعلم أن له ربا يغفر الذنب and he came to know that there's a lord he has that that forgives sins. ويأخذ بالذنب and he also knows he has a lord. That can hold him account for those sins. Then the slave went back again and he committed the sin. فقال, he says, Ay Rabbi, my Lord, forgive me my, for my sins. فقال, وتعالى, Allah وتعالى, says, My slave has committed a sin. He knows he has a Lord. He knows he has a Lord. That can forgive him for the sins that he has done. And he also knows that he has a, a Lord that can hold him account for the sins. اعمل ما شئت Oh my slave, do what you want. فقد غفرت لك I have forgiven you. As long as you're repenting, as long as you're doing what you're doing, and you're coming back to me, and you're asking for forgiveness, I also forgive you. 
And that's how we are, all of us. We commit a sin, we run back to him again. We commit a sin, we go back running to him again. We commit a sin, we come back to him again. As long as we're repenting, as long as we're trying to stay away from the sin, as long as we're fighting against the sin, but if we fall into it because our nafs overcomes us, but as long as we're, 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 we're repenting from it and we're asking for forgiveness, then we are upon khair and good. وفي الصحيحين من حديث عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه Bukhari and Muslim both narrated on the authority of Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه قدم على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سبي A captive was brought to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فإذا امرأة من السبي تحلب ثديها تسقي إذا وجدت صبيا في السبي أخذته فألصقته ببطنها وأرضعته The Prophet was brought to him captives and amongst the people, the captives that were brought to him there was a woman she would breastfeed a child so she was looking for her own child she couldn't find and so whenever she saw a child she would think it was her child that she would breastfeed and then when she sees that it's not her child, she'll throw it and then she'll grab another one, thinking it's her child. And she'll do the same. Then the Prophet said to the companions, This woman that you see that's doing that, do you think she, if she found her child, that she would throw her child into the fire? قلنا, we said, لا, No, she wouldn't do that if she's able to not throw her child in. If she's able to not throw her child in and she has the choice, then no, she, I don't think she would do it. فقال then the Prophet said الله أرحم بعباده من هذه بولدها Allah is more merciful to his slaves than this woman to her own child the mercy of Allah is greater and it's more than this woman how she is to her child ولذلك أحد الصالحين from one of the righteous people he understood this hadith and he understood that the raja requires amal salih. So he made a dua and he said, Allahumma inna ka ta'lamu, oh Allah, you know. Anna ummi hiya arhamun nasi bi. You know my mother is my mer- the most merciful person to me. Oh Allah, you know my mother is my, the most merciful one to me. Wa ana a'lamu and I also know anna ka arhamun bi and that you are more merciful to me. Min ummi than my mother. Wa ummi my, and my mother... لا ترضى لي الهلاك my mum my mum's never pleased for me to be destroyed ولا عذاب and to be punished أفا ترضاه لي أنت are you going to be pleased for me to be destroyed you oh Allah تبارك وتعالى وأنت أرحم الراحمين and you are the most merciful so I was trying to get from Allah تبارك وتعالى oh Allah don't be pleased with it for me forgive me Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi, he narrated in a hadith bi sanadin hasan. This hadith is hasan, it's sound li shawahidi with all of the shawahid that come with it. And Anas ibn Malikin, based on the hadith or the authority of Anas ibn Malikin, that he said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu say, qala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, Allah said, Ya ibn Adam, the children of Adam, inna kama da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana fika wa la ubali. Ya ibn Adam, law balagat dunubaka anana al-samai thumma istaghfartani, غفرت لك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم إنك لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها مغفرة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said Allah تبارك وتعالى he said يا ابن آدم the children of Adam إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني as long as you are supplicating to me and you're hoping from me غفرت لك I will forgive you على ما كان فيك that which is in you the mistakes that you are committing the crimes that you're doing ولا أبالي and I don't care يا ابن آدم the children of Adam لو بلغت ذنوبك عنان السماء if your sins fill up to the sky ثم استغفرتني and then you ask forgiveness from me غفرت لك I will forgive you ولا أبالي and I don't mind يا ابن آدم the children of Adam إنك لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا if you come to me this earth full of sins ثم لقيتني and you meet me the day of judgment لا تشرك بي شيئا without associate partners with me لا أتيتك I will come to you with بقرابها مغفرة this earth full of forgiveness
Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, he said, Man adhnaba dhanban, anyone who commits a sin, fa'alima and he knows anna Allah ta'ala qaddarahu alayhi. That Allah ta'ala wa ta'ala done the qadr on him for it. Wa raja ghufranahu, and he hopes for Allah ta'ala wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Ghafar Allah lahu dhanba, Allah will forgive him for his sins. ولذلك الإمام الشافعي said في مرض موته on his deathbed when he was dying ولما قسى قلبي وطاقت مذاهبي جعلت الرجا مني لعفوك سلما تعاظمني ذنبي فلما قرنته بعفوك ربي كان عفوك أعظما الإمام الشافعي said on his deathbed he said ولما قسى قلبي وطاقت مذاهبي when my heart became Qaswatul Qalb happened to me. And my madahib became tightened and Ja'altul Raja, I placed my hope. Minni li afwika. I placed my hope in your forgiveness, Sulaman, as a step as a uh, what's it called? When you climb to get to the top. A sulam, what's it called? A staircase. staircase. Yeah, huh? A staircase. Okay. Ta'adhamani dhambi. My sins became something big to me. Falamma qarantu. But when I compared it to. Bi'afwika your forgiveness, Rabbi, my Lord. Kana afwika a'adhama. Your forgiveness became more bigger to me. That's what Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said. And also Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah narrated, and this is min ajmal al-ahadith, from the greatest ahadith that clarifies this matter. Ma rawahu Tirmidhiyu fi sunan. And Imam Tirmidhiyu, he narrated it in his sunan. Wa ibn Majah. And wa jawwada sanadahu al-Nawawiyu. And Imam al-Nawawi classified this chain of narration to be very good. Min hadith Anasin, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, we brought this hadith before. And the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet, dakhala ala shabin wa huwa fil mawti, he entered upon a boy. On his deathbed about to die. كيف تجدك? The Prophet said, How do I find you? قال والله يا رسول الله. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah. إني أرجو الله وإني أخاف ذنوبي. I hope from Allah and I fear my sins. قال رسول الله. The Prophet said to him, لا يجتمعان في قلب عبد في مثل هذا الموطن إلا أعطاه الله ما يرجو وأمنه مما يخاف. The Prophet said, It doesn't combine in the heart of a believer fear and hope in this particular moment. Except Allah gives him that which he hopes for and Allah saves him from what he fears. So the person has to realize, my beloved brothers and sisters, لا رجاء إلا من الله There's no one to hope except Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Oh, my beloved brothers and sisters, لا ترجى من ملك مقرب Do not have hope in an angel who's close to you. ولا من نبي مرسل And don't have hope in a messenger that's sent to you. Have hope in Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ If you ask, ask only Allah. If we rely on somebody, rely on Him Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. There are thamarat. There are benefits that the raja has. There are thamarat that come from and fawaid that the raja has. And we will mention those inshallah ta'ala. The first one is إظهار العبودية والفاقة والحاجة إلى ما يرجوه العبد من ربه. It is الرجاء is a way to express عبودية servitude and need to your Lord Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And that you are never rich and you are not, never without any need of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's virtue and Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's kindness. The second benefit is what? Annahu subhanah yuhibbu min ibadihi an yuamiluh wa yarjuh wa yasaluh min fadlih. Allah loves subhanahu wa ta'ala from his slaves that they hope in him. They desire him and they ask from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves it. Number three.
أنه يبعث العبد على أعلى المقامات that الرجاء lifts and it takes the slave to highest levels the highest stations and that is مقام الشكر the station of gratitude which is شكر is خلاصة العبودية it's the summary of عبودية The second, the other, the the other benefit that he has is that الرجاء مستلزم للخوف رجاء necessitates fear والخوف مستلزم للرجاء and fear necessitates hope فكل راج خائف and everyone who hopes Allah fears Allah تبارك وتعالى وكل خائف and everyone who fears Allah is راج hopes Allah تبارك وتعالى And there are many more other fawaid, the benefits that one will find in Al-Raja. And we'll conclude there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong, mistake, shortcoming, is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.